So welcome to uh, Curl Up 2022 again. About uh, this is my presentation about curl experiments and deprecations and where we are with them right now in the project, and a little bit maybe where we will be uh, very soon. So we have a while ago. I don't actually remember quite exactly when we introduced the concept of experiments in the curl project as a way as a way to allow us to sort of merge code earlier that is disabled by default but we merge it to allow people to actually build it try it sh not ship it but you know experiment with it and, and see that it works prove that it works try it out and, and bring back feedback um, to to the to the project so that we can polish it and once we remove the experimental label uh, and you know we can enable it by default and we have a higher certainty and, and you know we trust it more and <clears throat> it feels better <clears throat> pretty much it's allow us it, it should allow us to ship code earlier because you know there's that gray zone when we write something new and until the next step when we ship it and we don't r change it ever again it's uh, api stable forever you know that transition is tricky the experimental is that middle stage where we haven't we haven't really um you know, carve the API in stone just yet, but we <clears throat> want to allow people to start using it so that we can get feedback and, and eventually carve it in stone. Um, <clears throat> so currently we have a few different experiments going. We have, for example, the hyper backend. <clears throat> it's a, a support for this Rust written HTTP library. So it's a new HTTP backend that we've been working on the last few years. Basically, you build curl to use hyper instead of native code for a huge chunk of the HTTP handling in code. Actually, you also replace ng HTTP2 then as a HTTP2 library. <clears throat> Another uh, pretty big um, experiment is the HTTP3 support and http 3 in itself has three different backends so uh, that's a, bu a bunch of different build combinations and third-party libraries you could opt to use if you want to do http 3 uh, and people have been using it we're we're going forward that slowly i will do a separate presentation about curl and http 3 well i will let you into more details about how you can try it out what works and, and stuff like that um, other experiments that's <laughs> has sort of gone a little bit too much under the radar. I'll get back to that too. Is the native su support for native CAs when you build with OpenSSL on Windows, you can still ask curl to use the native CA uh, store in Windows. You know the the native one that isn't in the PEM file that you usually use with no OpenSSL uh, libraries for, for the CA bundle. We used to have the headers API up until this year, earlier this year, when we sort of unflagged the experiment, uh, experimental label from the headers API. So now we actually support the headers API forever and forever. The API is now there, stable, solid, and we've supported it. And, and it seems to be working pretty good too. <clears throat> I'm not sure it was became this thanks to the experiment experimental state but anyway we also have Russell's um, labeled as experimental primarily because it still has a, a sub 10 test cases disabled when you build with Russell's because uh, I don't I haven't really kept up with Russell's recently but it's actually still lacked support of some features that we test for in the test suite and that's I think that's a clear indication that Russell's isn't really uh, up to snuff in comparison to all the others uh, sort of so still experimental and this has a question mark web sockets because i haven't really merged this yet but i'm doing this re recording on september 9th 2022 and i actually want to merge this code today i'm not sure i will actually succeed because i'm sitting here blabbing all day instead but any day soon so maybe by the time you see this video uh, i might have uh, merge this and then it's uh, in an experimental state so the problems with having experimental code the general the general problem with experimental uh, working this way 
is pretty much that, yeah, sure, we land it in code and nobody enables them anyway because, you know, they're not enabled by default. Most, uh, very few people actually build curl themselves. Most people just use curl built by someone else and those, someone else's, they build curl to, you know, to ship in production or whatever. They build it for, for a specific purpose, not for running uh, fun curl experiments. So very few people actually try out experimental f uh, features. So uh, the next, of course, the result of that is nobody's using them. So nobody's telling us how they work because nobody knows how they work because they didn't build them. Uh, so that m gives us very little uh, information or detail. When do we switch off the experimental? Uh, I mean, when do we conclude that the experiment is successful, right? Nobody tells us anything. So eventually we just, hey, maybe it's been a half year, it's been a year, maybe we should just toggle it off. It's not a very effective way to do uh, experiments this way. Uh, so one way or, or a thought experiment really, or maybe we should provide binary builds better, more to, for, for ex experimental features to offer, to make it easier for average Joes to, to download and run an, um, bin, uh, sort of an experimental binary. But it's also a bit of a, you know, providing binaries is tricky, especially when we have so many different platforms, different users, different blah, blah, blah. So, so binaries for what? And what experimental features or what combinations of experimental features? The more, should we enable them all? Should we just enable a few? Should we have different combinations for all those platforms? I don't know. That's an idea. And, and I know I've had proponents for that idea, at least f f from some people, because um, exactly for the reasons I've said that very few people actually try it out. So I mentioned, you know, these things, you people might want to try out the hyper backend, but nobody wants to build it. How do you actually try it out? Um, sure. But I think maybe primarily we need some volunteers to help us do this if we want to do this. So do you think it's a good idea? Maybe we should work on it. So similarly, so, so the experiment idea is a way to, for us to transition things into curl, right? Without doing it in a single big explosion bump. And the reverse idea, how to gradually transition things out of the project is how we deprecate things. And <clears throat> We how we deprecate things um, in the project, we basically do the same thing, right? We uh, label them uh, as, no, something that isn't used anymore. I don't know. We don't have any method to, to figure this out. But, you know, randomly you run over or f discover something a day, one day. So, oh, this particular feature, uh, like, we did the other day, NPN, sort of, oh, right, we support NPN in TLS. Why do we do that? Nobody's using NPN. Nobody has used NPN for years. Oh, right, I, you, I checked it out. The browsers, they s ripped it out five, six years ago. Why do we support NPN? Maybe we shouldn't support NPN anymore because we, that's just code, dead code f with no particular purpose because nobody's using it. So. I added it to the deprecated list and announced it's, hey, we're going to remove this in the future. And usually I try to then say at least six months into the future so that I can announce it properly and say, hey, I want to rip this out in six months. And if this is a problem for you, yell, complain, give us feedback, say that you're using, you use it, say what you want to do instead, blah, 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 it's, you know, something, get a conversation going. And this of course helps us to sort of trim the tree from dead crap that nobody's using anyway. Um, and really some of the things we support that, you know, is in there, um, uh, it's just make things complicated. And for no, if nobody's using it, it adds complication for no particular good reason. For example, uh, I think a very good example is the, a few years back, we removed support for HTTP pipelining. Pipelining, uh, you know, that's HTTP one speak for doing uh, things, um, you know, request, 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 response, 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 uh, without doing it, without when wait, without waiting for the responses in between. 
and basically it didn't really work and and very very few people actually ever used it and and uh, it made the code seriously complicated so by just removing the support for that we simplified everything removed code that virtually no one used and that is a lot of the ideas here getting rid of code is good because we only have this finite number of contributors or people looking at the code and the more code we add the more you know we're all distributed over more code and that's not a manageable problem we when we add code we should also consider removing code so that we don't just explode in a number of lines of code uh, we do that anyway but we need to sort of find these ways to find dead stuff and remove it but of course we have abis we have apis we need to be able to drop these things nicely so we don't break existing applications and of course that's a judgment call what what do we mean with breaking do we actually by by removing something maybe something breaks but that's also why we have this long um, time to announce it and to get people to provide their feedback to tell us what could possibly break if we remove this in the future like when we remove npn is there anything that will break npn isn't actually used by anything these days it's, it was never uh, any sort of real rfc it was never standard it was replaced by npn before http2 shipped so maybe it should never even have been supported by curl as an example and we should warn at least six months ahead of time we have uh, sometimes very long lead time so six months is the bare minimum to warn people and alert people so we have this deprecate document in curl that we add stuff at least six months ahead before we plan to rip them out and we talk about them on the mailing list at the time we add them to the deprecation document and at the time when we consider ripping actually doing the act of ripping the code out at least it's sort of it brings that uh, it brings people people's attention to these things that we intend to remove and i have added nss support as one of those things to the deprecation list and um, this is a little bit of a uh, controversial and they've gotten some discussions going nss is a tls library it's been supported by carl for a very long time maybe 20 years almost um, it was used for a long time by red hat installation so red hat and said uh, santos at least you know if you use, use ancient installations of those they still use nss you know because they installed them 15 years ago um, but nothing modern is using curl with nss no linux distros no particular users no at least that's my impression so that's why i added that there and it's quite a lot of code and, and nss is also a bit special in the family of tls libraries so being special uh, is also pretty i mean it's a good reason to get rid of it because we could get rid of a few peculiarities or special cases for that we have for nss but we still seem to have quite a few users of nss when we ask in the annual uh, user survey and there's also this curl impersonate project that have popped up recently that uh, is also a, a big user of nss just because that helps them to look more like firefox browsers uh, so we actually recently postponed the deprecation of nss with a year so i'm sure we will have the discussion next year again should we deprecate nss or should we not already now you actually have to add a, a special configure flag when you build with nss that actually says deprecated nss so it's it's not a surprise for anyone who actually enables nss that we have this plan the long-term plan and mentioned already several times we did have when i wrote these slides a while ago i added npn here because it was still on the deprecation list it's not on the deprecation list anymore because i've already ripped it out it's going to be gone in 786.0 no support for npn of course you can still use the flags you can still set the options and everything so it doesn't really break any apps it just won't enable it over the wire it might but actually break apps but 
the, I think the risk is minimal, minuscule. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to say. If you have any questions, you just fire them off. Uh, but uh, this is a recording, so you can't ask me the questions right now, right? But uh, do it uh, to me outside of the recording. See you.